pray. Even at times when our prayers come in the form of questions or even doubt. As we turn our hearts and our minds to God in worship today, may we truly invite the spirit of our God into our hearts and into this place so that our lives and our community may be transformed. Will you stand as we sing together our opening hymn? <laughs> As we go to God in prayer this morning, we give thanks uh, for this time to share in prayer with one another. We give thanks for a God who hold those, holds those prayers with us, uh, those we will share aloud this morning, and those that we are finding our words for. Uh, so we lift up a few specific prayer requests this morning. Uh, Dickie Houchins shared that his great niece, Chelsea Coleman's cancer has returned. Uh, so she will have chemo and a surgery. And so we pray for Chelsea's strength and resilience. Uh, during this difficult, difficult time, uh, Lord, hear our prayer. Uh, Carolyn Boyd had neck surgery earlier this week, and so we pray with Carolyn as she rests and recovers and heals. Uh, Lord, hear our prayer. Uh, Crystal and her youngest, Nova, both got COVID last week. Um, everyone is getting better, uh, but continued prayers for their recovery. Uh, Lord, hear our prayer. Uh, and then Mac Mallory will be having surgery in Nashville on Thursday, uh, and so we pray with him ahead of that and in the days to follow for a smooth surgery, uh, recovery, and healing. Uh, Lord, hear our prayer. Uh, let us continue in the spirit of prayer together. morning church pray with me lord transform us not for our benefit but for the benefit of the world do your work in us molding us making us shaping us changing us to be the new creation you have called us to be in jesus christ lord Transform us to do your work in our church. Help us to be the body of Christ, engaged in mission, testifying to the power of our faith, witnessing to the presence of our living and loving Savior, Jesus Christ. 
Help us surrender the church back to you. Let us lay aside our personal agendas and preferences so we can be fully committed to your calling for us. Lord, transform us to do your work in our world. Give us a vision of transformed lives, neighborhoods, and communities, and how we can partner with you to see what can happen when people of faith make an internal difference, living and loving like Jesus and giving themselves fully, heart, mind, and strength to be the very presence of Jesus Christ in our world. Bring blessings and redemption for the glory of God. Now we join together and pray the words that you taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Let us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory of God forever. Our children are invited to children worship and wonder. the choir sang and after hearing Stephen's beautiful prayer I don't I feel like we we've heard a lot today um at least I have so I'm grateful to be here uh Megan and I have well Megan chose a difficult scripture last week and I 
also chose what I think is a strange one this week. So um, we're going to read from Lamentations today, chapter 3, verses 19 through 23. The thought of my affliction and my homelessness is wormwood and gall. My soul continually thinks of it and is bowed down within me. But this I call to mind, and therefore I have hope. The steadfast love of the Lord never ceases. His mercies never come to an end. They are new every morning. Great is your faithfulness. This is the word of the Lord, and in it we can trust. In the Hebrew Bible, the book of Lamentations is known by the first word of the book. How, or Eka. That makes perfect sense for anyone who has ever experienced the loss and destruction that gives birth to lament. When facing such tragedies, our first word is often a question like how or why, or even in keeping with the psalmist and the authors of these grief poems and lamentations, where were you, God? We have asked these questions ourselves. COVID still threatens our everyday lives. Why, God? We're still recovering from a tornado that devastated our community over a year ago. Where were you, God? Food insecurity continues to increase as grocery prices rise. How do you let this happen, God? We've been living through a prolonged season of lament, of Ika, of how. And if we're being honest with our full selves, many of us are walking through our days with a heaviness and a weariness of heart that makes it hard to rise up out of bed each morning. Yet, when reading our text this morning, we hear the steadfast love of the Lord never ceases. His mercies never come to an end. They are new every morning. Great is your faithfulness. In the midst of our despair, lament, doubts, and questions, we turn to a God who is always there, always faithful, always loving. Lament is acknowledgement of pain and the first step towards the last several years have been tough on our families, our community, and our world. And I'm not expecting us as individuals or a church family to just let it go or leave it behind without difficulty. We may be working through the impact of our trauma for years to come. But I do believe that we are in a unique position to hope. To hope for something new and exciting that we may have never been able to imagine before. To hope for the courage to step out and do church differently. To hope for the opportunity to take risks, make mistakes, and try again. And from that hope comes action. So we ask the question again, how? How do we move forward, God? How do we live into this new normal as church? How do we continue to be an inclusive faith community built on the love of Christ? God, where are you calling us to go? What are you calling us to do? And we remember these words, the steadfast love of the Lord never ceases. His mercies never come to an end. They are new every morning. Great is your faithfulness. We've been talking about FCC's vision for the past five weeks. A future with hope. Stepping out in faith. We discerned it. We wrote it. We shared it. We blessed it. We have a vision. Now let's do it. It's not going to be easy. It's going to take time and patience, growing pains, as Megan talked about last week, and setbacks. Yet, I can confidently say that we are up for the challenge, and when we get discouraged or fatigued, we will remember 
that the steadfast love of the Lord never ceases. So far, our guideposts have included naming, claiming, and utilizing gifts within the church, love beyond labels, sharing life, rooted in God, growing in love. And this morning, we will talk about mutually transformational community work. I got the fun one. So let's dig in. When I sent out my children's newsletter this week, I broke up this phrase and defined each word on its own because it's a wordy goal. So mutuality happens when people work together and everyone brings their gifts to the table. To transform means we are open and ready for change. And our community includes all the people around us in church, in school, at work, in our neighborhoods, in our city. And work is pretty self-explanatory. It's time to take action. We hope to see this mutual transformation happen on several different levels. First, person to person, inside and outside the church. We see these relationships transforming through our small groups, children's and youth programming, and outreach ministries. Our community grocery store is discerning its own vision for what this looks like between our volunteers and our neighbors shopping for food. Second, church to church, as we deepen our partnerships with the other downtown churches. God's call to walk alongside those with food insecurity is community-wide. The other downtown churches are offering their own programs to aid those in need. But what would it look like if we combined our efforts? Third, FCC wants to come alongside existing or new community partners, much like we have with Hotel Inc. Our relationship with Hotel offers benefits for the community grocery in the form of funding for food, while myself and the other community grocery store committee receive mentoring and visioning assistance from the staff there. Hotel Inc.'s participants are referred to FCC's grocery in order to fill in some gaps while they work towards sustainability. In turn, we also meet folks who come through our doors that may benefit from Hotel Inc.'s services. There's a back and forth, a fluidity, a shared experience and relationship, a common goal, conversation and connection care and compassion for one another. This sounds amazing. So why am I terrified? Maybe because the type of mutually transformative work I'm talking about is going to stretch us. It's going to make us really uncomfortable. I'm already uncomfortable. <laughs> the scary thing about a vision is that it isn't always clear and we can't always see where we're going. When I consider the other five guideposts, the next steps seem pretty obvious because we've already started taking them. We want to share life, so we have coffee hour following worship, and we invite everyone to come to our fellowship dinners once a month. We want to grow in love, so we form new small groups while supporting those that already exist. We want to love beyond labels, so we will renovate our facility to reflect the inclusive welcome and hope found in our sanctuary. We want to be rooted in God, so we invite our, our uh, three-year-olds to second graders to worship and wonder, and our third through fifth graders into a space to learn about how the Bible applies to their lives. And we want everyone to use their gifts and passions in the church. So we sent out a survey and plugged people in based on the results. But transformation is tricky. And when you do it alongside others, it can be scary. It requires trust, commitment, and compassion. It is not something that can be rushed, but is long-term work. So I have to be honest when I came in this morning, I was feeling pretty discouraged about my sermon because I hate not knowing what the future will hold. But then I came into church 
and realize that it's okay to be frustrated and scared because I'm not alone. I'm not doing this work by myself. We have an amazing staff that love to collaborate and brainstorm. We have members who have been here their whole lives who will guide us to stay true to who FCC is. And we have new members and friends who will challenge us to try new things. God has called us to move forward together. You might not know that the small poetic book of Lamentations was composed during the fall of Jerusalem to the invading Babylonian armies. God's people lost their homes, their livelihood, their place of worship, yet they were able to find hope, the hope they needed to carry on in spite of the losses they faced. They moved forward without a clear path to follow, and we will too. Because however deep the fear, however difficult the situation, we will rely on the steadfast love of God and give ourselves over to the one who is always the source of our hope. Great is God's faithfulness indeed. Amen. A few years ago, I got to take a group of youth to Fort Worth, Texas for a service learning trip, a summer mission trip, as we call them, uh, during which we had the opportunity to spend the day at an apartment complex that primarily served refugee and immigrant families. Uh, our job for that day was to play with the kids, to offer the parents some respite care. Uh, we played four square and jump rope and lots and lots of soccer. When it came time for lunch, that four-square court turned into a table where we shared sandwiches and chips and cookies, and we also shared a little bit about ourselves, our favorite colors, our favorite songs, what superpower we would want to have if we got to pick a superpower. Towards the end of that week, we were in the TCU bookstore about to get popsicles when we got a call about needing help preparing an apartment complex for a refugee family that was going to be moving in later that week. 
and my youth had an outburst of joy at the opportunity. High fives and cheers in the middle of that bookstore. I know that I've told this story before, but I love it because I think back to that time at the Foursquare Court, that Foursquare Court that was turned into a table and how we were changed around it, uh, spending time with those young folks. I mean, we had to be transformed, right? Choosing to move furniture over getting a popsicle. I think we risk transformation every time we show up at Christ's table. Uh, that message that you are loved and you are invited just as you are is surely a transformative one. And not only that, it is here around a table where we come to know holy hospitality and abundant grace, where we learn through the sharing of bread and cup what it means to be table people, to participate in that mutually transformational community work. And so church, we are invited to Christ's table where we learn to see each other as we really are, beloved and made in God's image, where we come to know abundance and a God that says all are welcome and there's always enough room and even more to share, and is here where we learn to risk, living into that gracious invitation, shaped for service and solidarity, filled with light and with love that causes us to shout with joy in those moments we have to make that love known in the world. And so we remember... It was on that night Jesus was gathered with his friends and his disciples and he took a loaf of bread and he blessed it and he broke it and he said, this is my body broken for you. Take and eat in remembrance of me. In the same way, after the supper, Jesus took the cup and he blessed it and he poured it out. He said, this is the cup of the new covenant. Each time you drink of it, do so in remembrance of me. This is the bread of life and the cup of God's love for you. All are welcome at Christ's table. Let us pray. Our Heavenly Father, how I praise you and thank you that you are a gracious, loving, and long-suffering God. You are faithful even when we're not. We ask you in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, to bless the bread and the wine to the souls of all of us who receive them today that we might eat and drink in remembrance of the body and the blood of your son. Lord, we celebrate your unfailing love, a love that is new every morning, a love that is steadfast and sure. Wait, may we feel a renewed spirit as we share communion today. Amen.
As Kyle mentioned, this morning is our final Sunday in our sermon series, A Future Filled with Hope, Stepping Out in Faith. But I will admit, my heart has already turned toward the season of Lent. On this Wednesday, we will mark ourselves with ashes and remember that from dust we have come and to dust we will one day return. And if we are honest, there is plenty of dust to go around. Who among us can fathom the depth of loss in the wake of an earthquake in Turkey? Who here can stomach the news of yet another oil spill and another polluted river? How do we stand to carry the weight of family disputes and turmoil in our very own relationships? For me, the darkness feels just a little bit lighter when we at least name it out loud in the safety of our beloved community. As we collect our offering this morning, I'm reminded of that beautiful verse from Lamentations, the steadfast love of God endures. And I want to remind us that these gifts are a sure sign of hope in a world that so often feels so full of dust and darkness. Today, you may have noticed the signs. It is designated as Week of Compassion Sunday, and the gift of being in covenant with other disciples, congregation, congregations around the country, is that through Week of Compassion, we already have partners on the ground in places like Turkey and Syria. If you would like to designate a gift to Week of Compassion, please mark your check or your gift as such. And also, amidst darkness, grief, and loss, your church gathers for worship, sets the table, and gathers in small groups to bear one another's burdens. This morning, I want to remind you that whether you give as the plates are passed or through an online gift, whether you share the gift of time or treasure, that together, together, we get to shine our lights into the darkness. Would you pray with me? God, we thank you that in a world that sometimes feels so dark, that your steadfast love remains. God, we give you thanks that we get to be visible signs of hope in a hurting world. And so as we give today, we pray that you bless our gifts, that you transform them, that you transform our neighbors, our neighborhoods, and that you transform us because of our love for you, O oh God. It's in the name of Jesus we pray. Amen.
Just a few things to keep in mind before we leave today. Our 6th to 12th grade youth are invited to a regional retreat at Camp Wakandaho, March 17th through 19th. The deadline to sign up is this Wednesday, February 22nd. Um, so this is our last call for sign up. So get signed up now. Um, Ash Wednesday worship will be this Wednesday at 6 p.m. Our theme is Seeking Honest Questions for Deeper Faith. In this week's e-news, there will be a link to a devotional that will accompany our sermon series. Our study materials come from Sanctified Art, um, the same one we used last year. Next Sunday at 5 p.m., we will be having a fellowship meal in Carter Hall, and Daniel will share about his experiences in Israel and Palestine. We will share an RSVP link in the e-news on Wednesday, so please let us know if you plan to attend. The meal will be provided by the FCC Readers Book Club. They will be serving soup and salad. The Lamplighters will be having their first lunch at the church on March 7th. At the meal, they will be offering feedback for special outings for the year, RSVP on the link in the e-news or by signing up on the mission bulletin board. The mission of the Lamplighters is to be a community of seniors, retired adults and friends building relationships with one another in the church the community, and with God. And on Sunday, March 5th, FCC will be hosting the choir from Thomas More University. Um, if you'll remember, they came uh, back in 2019, but before COVID. Um, they will be performing in our sanctuary at 7.30 p.m. Um, and they are looking for host families for 20-ish students uh, that will be coming to perform. So if you're interested, please email Matt Herman at matthew.herman at wku.edu or you can talk to me and I can get you connected to Matt. Um, the students, this is one of their favorite stops on their tour um, the last time they came through, so you guys are great hosts, so let's just be great hosts again. All right, let us rise for a benediction. As we leave this place, may we do so with the understanding and the hope that the steadfast love of the Lord never ceases. God's mercies never come to an end. They are new every morning. Great is God's faithfulness. Go in peace.